Okay, so this is the PCI V2 slider and seat mount assembly. This is E46 specific, and today we're going to be installing it with a cloth Recaro pole position ABE. <clears throat> so we already did the driver's seat just to kind of get a feel for how everything is. I've laid out all the materials that they give you, along with some hardware that I bought that I will explain, and the necessary tools that we found were the most helpful. In the manual, PCI recommends that you assemble first the sliders onto the mount, not tight, and then the seat mounts onto the sliders, not tight, and then the seat onto the side mount, not tight, and then you tighten everything and put it in the car. We found that that works great, just doing everything on the table and then transferring everything into the car as it's super light. We're gonna be utilizing this stock seatbelt receptacle. You can go with a kit like VAC or something that supplies a shorter receptacle, but we found that the height of the receptacle mount, along with how long the actual receptacle is, is perfect for putting it through the harness hole and it sits great at your hip. This kit also utilizes this bag of hardware if you're using harnesses. Uh, since we're not, you will not be needing this. So we did most of the legwork when it came to measuring and seat centering since it's such a big issue on the E46 and it might be in your case as well. In the V2 kit, you have one side with four holes and then one side with two and an oval and everything else is relatively symmetrical. We found that using the side with the ovals is the best to put the receptacle on, AKA towards the trans tunnel. So this will be our passenger side since the seat will be facing forward, receptacle on this side, trans on this side, and utilizing the ovals is very helpful. When it comes time to put the bolt through here to secure the receptacle onto the mount, you get very little clearance between the slider itself and the head of the bolt, so it just makes the most sense. Another thing to note is if you're doing just the driver's side or the driver's side in general, or you just want to keep them uniform between the driver's and passenger side, we will not be utilizing these spacers. These add about a quarter of an inch push out from the trans tunnel. It doesn't matter if you use them on the other side, it's still pushing you out from the trans tunnel. So it doesn't allow for you to center the driver's seat completely with the steering wheel. Now, even without using these, it's not totally, totally centered, but that's pretty much with any uh, bucket seat in an E36 or E46. So now we can get started. As per the directions, they don't clearly say which size goes where for as per these M8 bolts. So the zinc ones are the longer ones. We found that using these with the four washers work on all four corners. That's what it says here if you read the fine print. The M8 by 1.25 by 16, so these are the 16 mil length ones. The 12 mil length ones go on the inside here and here. So we will be using blue Loctite for just about every single piece of hardware in this assembly just for safety and peace of mind, but you don't have to. It's not on the instructions anywhere that I know of. So use it at your own discretion. We also bought four of these, which are bolts that go into the side of the Recaro. These are the stock seat bolts for the floor. These are the ones that go from the side mount into the side of the Recaro. These are also M8 by 1.25. So if you need bolts to go through your side mount into your Recaro and they, for whatever reason, didn't come with your seats or side mount kit, M8 by 1.25 is the size you need. I believe these are 30 millimeters in length. We're gonna be focusing on this bottom row here. This is one bag itself. The rear of the floor mount is where these flaps are. The front of the sliders is where the bar mounts and the rears are with nothing on it. So you wanna be facing it towards the front, the thin side down. So you want this wire to be exposed on the top here. These two holes line up with these two mounts and vice versa. So to start by hand, you can push down on this tab here and slide the bottom all the way out. Hear that click, 
line it up, and you'll be able to put the bolts through. So this might change if, you're, if you want to use spacers, but since we are not using the spacers and we want the seat to be as close to the trans tunnel as possible, we found that on the side with four holes, keep in mind, this is the passenger side. So this would just be exactly the opposite on the driver's side, but same number of holes, if that makes sense. So one, two, third hole in, we found was the best. So for this outside one, zinc bolt, thick washer on the outside, and a nut, and you drop it in there, line it up with the hole, feed the bolt through from underneath. The geometry of the slider acts as the wrench for the nut, so you can just feed it in with, by hand from the bottom. Keep in mind this does not need to be tight right away. Again, the inner one is the shorter bolt without a washer. The outer one is the longer bolt with a washer on the bottom. I'm gonna put this here now, this is future me. Make sure to install your seatbelt receptacle holding bolt before you secure down your slider. This bolt is exceptionally close to the outside of the slider here, especially if you're on that outside oval. So make sure you install it before you install your slider because it will not go in once your slider's in. But once it's here, the slider will be able to move back and forth freely. Okay, so all eight points are in. We're not gonna completely tighten them just yet because now we are going to move on to the side mounts. They welded up some nice brackets that are perfectly spaced for two bolts that go at the front and the rear of each slider. You're gonna need to slide them all the way forward to get the fronts in and vice versa for the rear. Keep in mind the slots go up front. So for these, once you put the bracket in, it's going to be a washer and a nut. All right, so as per PCI's directions, all of the bolts that have been assembled right now are loose. So you are able to move these side mounts in and out because there is an oval where the side mount mounts to the slider. So what we found without using the spacers, because keep in mind the spacers do make a difference, we found that these sliders should be all the way in. So since this is a passenger, I will be moving them as far left as I can. But if this was a driver, they'd be as far right as I can. And that's due just to wanting to keep the bucket towards the trans tunnel, um, also so the shoulder pad doesn't hit the door when you close it. So this one, we're gonna be moving all the way in, just like so. And this one, as you can see, it's on slots, all the way in. And these will be tightened there, and then the seat will slot in perfectly. So at this time, we're gonna start needing the tools. So the tools that I have with me are a 17 mil wrench, a 13 mil wrench, a 16 mil socket, a 13 mil socket, a T10, a six millimeter hex, and a few ratchets. So right now we're gonna focus on this little T10 Torx. And I'm not sure if this is in fact a Torx or a hex. Um, it's a little too small to tell, but the next step would be to add your beautiful PCI badge to the side of your mounts. All right, so after those side badges were mounted, the camera stopped recording, so I'm going to explain where I left off. You are looking at a completed unit right now. This is the perspective of the passenger side, seatbelt receptacle on the left. It'll be easier to, fit, to visualize it here. After those side plaques went in, time to tighten down the side mounts onto the siders. Once those are tight, you lift the whole assembly on its underside, tighten up these eight bolts here, and make sure they're in your desired location. If you are using the spacers, be aware, you might need to be one hole over to account for the a cumulative half an inch that those spacers do add. Once your side mount to slider bolts and your slider to floor mount bolts are all tight, you can go ahead and put the lift bar in. That's what the rubber mount is for. You line it up with this pin with the hole at the end of the bar here, push it in. If you don't have enough grip strength to click it in, it needs to click. You give it a few taps with the mallet and it goes in just fine. Your bolt will be sticking out for the receptacle. If you're using harnesses, it's the same thing. Make sure you put those bolts in before the side mounts, and then you can go ahead and bolt up your harnesses or your seatbelt receptacle however you want. How we did it was the bolt going through a washer before the receptacle, the receptacle itself, a crush washer, and a nut, and we used Loctite. We're using an M12 here to go through the factory receptacle. The receptacle can only take up to an M12 in width. If you're using the harnesses, use the supplied M14s that they did give you, and that is the completed assembly. I really do apologize for this being all over the place. We had the whole entire thing on film, but it wasn't recording the entire time. It stopped at around 30 minutes. I think it had something to do with my camera, but 
now I know. So if this was a little hard to follow, I apologize, but now let's continue with putting the seat onto the assembly using those M8 bolts on two on each side. PCI recommends that you start at the top of each side mount. So that would mean the top hole in the back and the top oval in the front and put the seat in the car, see how it feels. If you wanna lean it back, you adjust the back. If you wanna put the whole seat down, you put it down on both sides. If you wanna lean it forward, you put the front down, etc. So Alden has found that the best position for him is the top one on the front and down one hole in the back. So we're going to do it there, tighten it and put it in the car and I'll show you what it looks like. So this is what it looks like if all your measurements were correct. And if you followed what we did with no spacers, we bolted up the back here. So now we can pivot it towards the front and with just a little clearance, that bolt's ready to be put in. So this is my Interlago C46, and this is one of two cloth AB pole positions that we are putting in the car. So this is a leather AB classic that I've had in the car for a while now. Great seat, it's paired to Recaro side mounts, Recaro sliders, and a planted floor mount. Pretty much two reasons why I switched to PCI, one of them being the height, which is marginal here, but it makes a big difference in the car, especially being shorter like myself, I'm about 5'8". So this is definitely a taller setup for a shorter person. The second one being, this is a great setup, but it's not super robust. There's not a lot of confidence inspiration from it, whereas the PCI has way more mounting points and you just feel a lot more locked in and in place. You feel a lot safer, which was a big thing. This solution kind of like sways and just overall wasn't the best feeling. So I'm excited to put these in, see how they feel, see how they look. <laughs> Successful install, seats are in. We lost a few more parts of the interior. It was already gutted in the rear previously. B pillars are not going back in because we broke the clips. Um, <laughs> took, the rear, <laughs> took the rear seat belts out, which required the B pillars or the C pillars to come off. So these would have gone back in, but as you can see, clips are in pieces. As always. Rear seat belts are out. Um, these kind of side leather pieces that the rear seat belts rest on are out. This little plastic trim that just goes over the top of the rear shelf out are just brackets that go over the rear window motors and yeah that's pretty much everything the gutted rear is kind of stupid but no one really sits back there you do save a little bit of weight it's definitely negligible but i mean when you add buckets and everything else it all adds up so i don't know it might all go back in one day probably not <laughs> definitely um, not <laughs> it's really loud too i did the 95a poly diff bushing so you get a lot of wine back there it's obnoxious but i like it so yeah let's uh go for a ride <laughs> 